Hello everyone, Big Red 310s here again with a new edition of All Sides of the Wrestling World back. A little quicker than I anticipated. I, I believe I updated, uploaded the last edition a few days ago, not too long ago. But I got through the next set of shows uh, fairly quickly. So yeah, uploading this right now. And for those, because I have gotten a few messages for those that really, really liked my cyclical nature of the WWE video. They say that was one of the best videos I've done in a while. Um, but that's actually, it's actually not my most, and, and some people are saying how I need to cut back on the reviews a little bit and get back to what I do best, videos like that. While that is true, um, the review videos, I mean, the past two haven't done particularly well, but uh, the one a few weeks ago, the one that I did over the limited slam anniversary, that one got more views than my cyclical nature video did. And again, I don't, use views like I've, I've always said on here i don't feel forced to do what the views tell me i it's kind of my channel i do whatever i want but at the same time i have a fan base and i want to give the fa i want if the fan base isn't enjoying what i'm doing and they would prefer me to do something else which i would have the exact same amount of enjoyment in producing then i wouldn't mind doing it so i'm just kind of throwing a lot of these out there because like i said i pretty much missed indie wrestling my entire senior year like every ccw show every dragon Gate usa show my entire senior year was just gone so i'm i was constantly backed up and backed up and backed up with shows but i'm getting close i the finish the finish is near i get i so to speak i'm actually talking about the last 2011 shows i had that i had yet to see yet in this video but another video that i'm going to bring to you in a few days well I wanted to do the video with Next Big Thing, a.k.a. Soda Popinski 82 a.k.a. my friend Brian. Um, kind of his part two coming on the Shooting with the Shooter series, for those who have asked about that. But uh, me and Brian are having scheduling difficulties right now. And I go, on, I go to Barcelona uh, tomorrow for like two weeks. So it doesn't seem like that's going to happen for a while. Uh, and I also want to get the sports video out there with Justin, JW1. But that's going to take a while as well. That might have to wait till pretty much the start of the NFL regular season because, again, scheduling is just a bitch. Um, but uh, besides these All Sides of the Wrestling World videos, another video I will bring at you guys. I will talk about The Rock and if The Rock is a problem for the WWE. As in, is The Rock... Is The Rock holding the WWE back with his once a year appearances? But I don't want to get into that now. Please do not start a, a comment war on this video about that. We'll save that for when I talk about that, which should be in a few days while I'm in Barcelona. But let's get into what we have at hand. Uh, like I said, I try to keep these things topical. And Money in the Bank wasn't too long ago, so I think it's fine to include that here. Uh, Money in the Bank. I thought it was a great pay-per-view. I actually ordered this pay-per-view because uh, I... Partly because I didn't order it last year because I couldn't. I was in Paraguay, and uh, and I'll never. I really, I really enjoyed that show. I'll never forget. As much as people love the main event, to me, that opener, I'll never forget that. This is a wrestling. This is one of those wrestling memories that I can tell people for my entire life. For that opener, Daniel Bryan, the, the when Daniel Bryan won the Money in the Bank, I was on a flight from Miami to Brazil that day. And I was scared that I was going to miss the pay-per-view. Um, and when when my flight landed, my flight landed in Brazil, like at 7:55, um, 7:55 Eastern U.S. time. I don't know. I don't. Know, I don't remember what the fuck the time was in Brazil, but it was 7:55 Eastern U.S. time. So I grabbed my laptop. I went to a stream. I sat by a fucking random rundown phone booth. In the corner of the airport with the, all these Brazilians staring at me. I'm sitting down, legs folded, laptop on my legs, headphones on, watching it. And I'm watching the Money in the Bank match. And I have like 15 minutes before I have to start getting on my flight to Paraguay. So I'm sitting there like, oh shit, I hope I get to finish the match. And Daniel Bryan gets the briefcase. And I remember yelling at the top of my lungs in the airport and having everybody look at me and fucking... On Twitter, everyone's going insane, saying, oh my god, yes, yes, before the yes thing became a thing. But everyone was going insane, and then I was I was in such joy, and then I closed, and then legit, as soon as it went to the Divas match, 
Um, my friend pulled me aside and was like, hey, we have to get going. And so I went, I went on my flight to Paraguay. And then that night I saw the rest of the show um, on a replay stream. And the show was amazing, but I'll never, ever forget that moment of not being able to catch that match, but barely being able to catch that match on a stream in a Brazilian airport, just hoping to get to catch the match, not even thinking Danielson had a chance to win and seeing Daniel Bryan win and myself going crazy and I'm going crazy. I will never forget that moment as long as I live. So that's what I owe mo- most to Money in the Bank. And so I couldn't order the show because I was out of town. But I told myself next year you'll order Money in the Bank just to get because it's most likely going to be a great show because it usually is every year because of the gimmick. But give back, give back for what you couldn't provide last year. And this year, CM Punk and Daniel Bryan was the scheduled main event at the time. And I told, and like I told Trademark, uh, no matter how bad the storyline is, when Daniel Bryan's in the main event of a WWE pay per view, I will always support it. So. I felt justified in ordering the show, and I was very happy with how it came out. I thought the pre-show match was one of the better pre-show matches they've done in a while. I don't know why they waste their time doing these three to four minute matches. Give the guys like eight to nine minutes. I mean, if you're going to fly them in, why why even bother? Unless it's like a Ryback match. Honestly, why even bother going through the trouble of flying people in for a pay-per-view if it's not going to get at least eight minutes? By the way, for those wondering, yes, I do have an Arizona iced tea in my hand again. This shit's great. All right. The SmackDown Money in the Bank match, I thought was a lot of fun. You know, I'm kind of surprised at the amount of love it got. I know a lot of, a lot of, I think a lot of the people on Twitter and a lot of the people on YouTube thought it was a very good match, but a lot of the more, I don't know, I mean, I don't want to make us ourselves look bad, but it's true. A lot of the more professional wrestling websites, the main reviewers out there really, really loved it. You know, I mean, it was it was a little clunky, but, you know, it had kind of like the crazy madness spots that people kind of mark out for in this match. I thought it was a lot of fun. I actually watched it twice, which I rarely do, mainly because uh, but I was clearing out my DVR and I wanted to, uh, what was I going to say? I was clearing out my DVR and I wanted to watch one of the matches because I had to leave for some dinner with my family. And I didn't have time to watch the Punk Daniel Bryan match because it was too long. But I had just enough time to rewatch the Money in the Bank. So I'm like, okay, before I delete this off my DVR, let me, you know, see this match again because I did enjoy it a lot. And I pretty much felt the same about it, you know. No, really. It's a, it's a very fun match. Very entertaining. A lot of, you know, it's a lot of your fun, spotty type stuff. I was very happy with the finish. I did not think Dolph Ziggler would win. I thought they would give it to Cody or Christian. And I put Tyson Kidd in as a dark horse because, like I said... Like I was saying on Twitter, you know, WWE doesn't book like that for Money in the Bank. Look at last year where Daniel Bryan, he was booked like shit going into that show. And Sheamus was booked like a monster and Sheamus didn't win. Look at WrestleMania WrestleMania 26. Drew McIntyre was booked as the strong heel and Jack Swagger was booked like shit. And Jack Swagger is the one who won the title, who won the briefcase. Like, you know, this company doesn't usually give the guy who actually has the momentum the briefcase so that's why I didn't think they would give it to Ziggler. I thought Ziggler was the Sheamus, the Drew McIntyre, basically the red herring of this year's Money in the Bank. But no, they went with Ziggler, which is you know, probably the best choice. I would have been fine. I, w- I know a lot of people were saying, I know Cody's good, but Ziggler's better, and it's Ziggler's time. I honestly wouldn't have cared. I hold them both in the same regard. And yes, I do think Ziggler's a better worker than Cody. Don't twist around my words. I'm just saying I wouldn't have minded if either one of them got the push because either one of them, I think, would have done the exact same with the push. Bam. There you go. Sheamus story was a fun match. Told a good story. I really enjoyed it. You know, I know Trademark didn't. I know a lot of other people didn't. And I know a lot of other people who liked it more than I did. You know, it was your fun, basic, second... Uh, it was your fun Del Rio match, I guess. Del Rio, I think, is kind of underrated. I think, like, you know... He can have a good match if he wants to. I think Sheamus, in most people's eyes, I think it's because he works a lot with Ziggler and Daniel Bryan. And I'm not saying Sheamus is a bad worker. Without question, he's not. He's a very good worker. But I think in the term, I don't know how to say this, in the eyes of of the internet fans, it seems that, like, obviously you have your Daniel Bryans and CM Punks who get love from their work on the indies. And you have these other guys that you didn't, that the internet fans didn't see work a lot on the indies, like your Sheamuses that still get credit for being good workers, whereas there are guys like, like you know, the Mizzes of the world who you also didn't see work in these, but he gets credit for being a bad worker, and rightfully so. And Kofi Kingston's another one who you didn't see work in these, but he's pretty much regarded as a good worker. 
I don't know. I, and but Del Rio is kind of middle of the road. I think some people like him, some people don't. He doesn't really get the acclaim like Sheamus and Kofi Kingston do. But I think he's good. And I knew these two would put on a good match, and they did. Primetime players versus Primo and Epico. This was okay. And the crowd didn't care about it, and I love the primetime players. I think they're a lot of fun, and they actually bring. They're actually a fucking team. They're a team that makes sense. They're a team that has a right to be together. They have a gimmick together. They have a manager. They're everything that should be in the WWE Tag Division right now, but isn't. Then we had Punk Brian. I was very pissed when this wasn't the main event. You know, a lot of people saying, oh, Punk has had the title for a long time. It makes the belt look prestigious. It does, but when the belt doesn't main event, I mean, and I know people are saying, some people are saying now, whoa, that was by design. I mean, they, they purposely didn't put Punk in the main event so he can get frustrated and turn heel. There are other ways to do that. Do you really honestly have to put your title on the back burner for six months in order to turn someone heel? I don't buy that logic. Uh, sorry, but... Yeah, I was just—I was really mad when this wasn't the main event. But I absolutely loved this match. I think I loved it more than anyone else. I, don't, I haven't seen any higher ratings than mine. Uh, Dave Meltzer, I believe, gave it four and a quarter, but everyone else, I think, gave it four or less. And I saw a lot—I know a lot of people gave it significantly less. But I thought this match was awesome. Um, I saw it. I didn't see it live because around this time I had to go. I forget where. I was doing something. And I just remember that I couldn't finish the pay-per-view. So I came home and I didn't get any spoilers for that match. And I watched it live and I was really, really into it. I know a lot of people didn't like the AJ spots, but because I, I because I kind of suspected that she was going to turn on one or the other, I was kind of, to me, to me, it added some drama to the match. Like every time she was trying to screw one, I was like, whoa, is this the finish? Is this the finish? Is this the finish? They had a lot of time. There were a lot of really good suspenseful near falls. I thought, you know, it was it built a lot of drama throughout the match. Both these guys are tremendous workers, obviously. I thought the kendo stick spots worked. I know Ben Turpin didn't like them because he just doesn't like the use of kendo sticks in professional wrestling, which I can understand. But I thought they added drama as well. I thought the attack to the injured ribs of Punk really worked out a lot during the match, and he sold them great. And I really like the finish. I like it. I like it more and more when they do finishes like that. Finishes that are not the finisher of either guy but are devastating enough to where it's a believable finish and it's a refreshing change of pace. And a lot of people were really mad that AJ ended up not screwing over anyone, but I don't get, I don't understand why people are mad. The gimmick is she's crazy. She doesn't know what she wants. That's why she was so indecisive the whole match and couldn't pick which one to screw because she didn't know. And she was never going to decide because she's insane. And so when she was mad at the end of the match that CM Punk took the, took the, what's the term? Took the, took the winner out of her hands like I know, like I've heard a lot of people say, and she was mad that she didn't get more time, that she couldn't pick the winner. And people were like, well, why didn't you pick a winner? Because she was never going to. She's just mentally unstable. She could never pick, she couldn't pick a side and she was never going to pick a side. She just wanted the match to keep going as long as possible so she could be the center of attention without ever picking a side. I thought it was fine, but I thought this match was absolutely wonderful. It, it's, I don't have it higher than their over the limit match, but I still have it in my top five matches of the year. Excellent. The Ryback match was a Ryback match. The women's match was a women's match. And the main event I thought was a very good match. I was telling everyone in the days leading up to this that everyone thinks this is going to be an okay Money in the Bank match. But I guarantee that it would be at least very good because they're going to tell a story and each guy is going to have their own character narrative flowing throughout the match. And that's exactly what it was. And it was a fun match, I thought. I know people who didn't like this, who thought it was too slow, blah, blah, blah. And I can understand. But I thought it was a very well-worked ladder match. And it had very good psychology, and I really, really enjoyed it. So three and a half, great show. I mean, Punk Danielson, Punk Daniel Bryan is amazing, and like I said, the two Money in the Bank matches are both very good, and the World Title match is good. Really, everything that was advertised delivered. So when that happens, then the pay per view was worth it. So yeah, I definitely recommend ordering the replay. My opinion, at least, great show. All right, CCW 2012 shows. An Excellent Adventure, Super Saturday, and the 13th Anniversary Show. Oh, sorry. I'm just playing with my dog right now for a little bit. What's up, boy? All right. Uh, An Excellent Adventure, I thought, was a fun show, but not a show that had particularly very good wrestling. I mean, if you look at my ratings, I believe there are three matches above three stars. Uh, But the show is entertaining because Greg Excellence, the GM, and a lot of the matches were short, but they were fun like, you know, I, I, the ma- the, I found the show to be entertaining because nothing was bad. Everything was fun. But like I said, there's not a lot of great wrestling on it. So, you know, it's, a, it's, it's an okay show. It's fun. 
Would I recommend purchasing it? Eh, I don't know. It's 15 bucks. It really depends. If you have a lot of money to blow and you want to buy a lot of CCW shows, I mean, there are worse shows to buy than this, so it's not a bad choice. But at the same time, if you can only buy one or two shows so far from the year, you probably shouldn't pick this one. But it's still an enjoyable show nonetheless. Derek Frazier, Ryan McBride, I thought really, you know, I thought it was a nice continuation of their feud. And I, people, are, well, let me get into this because Trademark uh, trademark kind of went off on me on Twitter. Because Trademark, as you see, or Matchmark, ah, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. He'll get mad that I said that. But basically, he got mad at me for saying that Super Saturday was a really good show because he didn't like it. And he called me a CCW mark and he told me that because I met DJ Hyde in Miami in, in during WrestleMania weekend. And ever since then, I've been sucking East CCW's dick, blah, 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 blah. <sighs> All right. I've been a CCW fan since Cage of Death 12, I believe. I remember for Best of the Best last year, I avoided spoilers for that pay-per-view, went out of my way to see the iPay-per-view, and pimped the shit out of it well before anyone else did. In fact, I started the hype for that show. I can confidently say that. I was always into the promotion. I was always into their hybrid style. I love the fact that their undercards mean something. They follow up on every match. It's not like in Ring of Honor where you feel like no match matters except the last two or three. In this promotion, every undercard is matches followed up on, and therefore every undercard wrestler feels important. That's why Chikara is the same. Every Chikara undercard feels important. For Ring of Honor, it's not the same. For Dragon Gate USA, it's not the same. But because they make their undercards feel important, I can buy into every character, which I appreciate. And then Trademark also said, and by the way, I talked to Trademark already about this. We're cool, but I need to address, I didn't address it on Twitter, and for those that are wondering, here's my response. Trademark also said, oh, you also talk about the product a lot more now ever since you talked to DJ Hyde. Okay, I talk about the product more now because I'm catching up on all the shows that I've missed, which I was going to do anyways with or without meeting DJ Hyde. Because if you go back to last year, I was reviewing the early shows of 2011 well before anyone else was. And I was always planning on catching up on the shows. I just never had time. So I'm catching up now. And uh, I started reviewing CCW again about three weeks ago. I talked to DJ Hyde in March. Uh, what else did he throw at me that was f flagrantly untrue? Uh, and again, we're cool, but just saying. I forget what it is. Uh, well, whatever. I think I covered most of it. But this show, uh, ex excellent. But basically, I enjoyed the CCW promotion a good deal. And I think you guys should check it out. But on this show, uh, let me see. Uhat Nation, Air, Air Fox was good. Sammy Callum Richmond was good. The main event's fun. Adam Cole, Devin Moore was disappointing. Eddie Kingston, Joker was disappointing. Both those matches should have gotten a lot more time. Me, I am Greg Excellence fun. Those two guys have really, really good chemistry. Like I said, nothing's great, but it's a, it's a fun show, but it doesn't have a lot of good wrestling on it, so it's not something that I can really recommend. But it's, it's, you know, it's not a waste of time. Super Saturday is a good show. A pretty good show, actually. I really like the show. The main event I thought was fun. I know a lot of people don't like Matt. There, I'm not like trademark. I know hates Matt Trima, Trima, and I know there are some people that don't like him, but he has a unique charisma to him, especially on the 13th anniversary show when he cut his promo. Like I can understand why he's popular with the CCW fans. There's something about him that just gets people to to get behind him, and I can understand it. And I, I really enjoyed his match with Danny Havoc. I had these guys, you know, they kept it. Simple enough for an ultraviolet match, but it was still highly entertaining, and I was able and it kept my attention throughout. Scotty Vortex, DJ High Devin Moore was a fun triple threat match. Uh, Sammy Callahan and Tommy Dreamer had a really good match. A little too long though. I believe the match got like 20 minutes. Don't didn't think that was necessary, especially when Air Fox and Samurai Del Soy, which was very, very good. And right now, my CCW match of the year, although that doesn't mean anything because I have a lot of shows to catch up on, but that match was so entertaining, and that only got 11 minutes. Uh, DJ Hyde told me in Miami that this this match got, actually got Samurai Del Sol a job in Dragon Gate USA. Uh, he, I believe what DJ told me was Samurai Del Sol was tech messaging him for two years, and DJ kept telling him to get better, and he did. And then he showed the match to Gabe, and Gabe started booking Samurai Del Soy on Dragon Gate USA and Evolve. So, yeah, this literally made his career. And it was a very, very fun match. Like I said, short, but a, a, a ton of near falls, a great amount of action. And Samurai Del Soy just does some crazy stuff. If you've never seen this guy, 
People wonder why I appreciate the Super Smash Bros. so much. And for all of you guys jumping on that bandwagon now, I've been on that shit since 2009. Go back to the Ring of Honor forum in 2010 when they dropped to the Bravado Brothers in the opening round of the Tag Wars. And I fucking flipped this shit on the board, ranting, going crazy, furious that they lost. What I love about the Super Smash Brothers, and Player Uno said this in an interview with Alan Farrell on F4WOnline.com, is the Super Smash Brothers like to create their own moves. Like... Uno and Dos will be in a car with action figures and like doing moves to the action figures and trying to figure out if it's realistically possible to do it in real life. They're very creative with their moveset. Same with Samurai Del Soy, Del Sol. He's also super creative with his offense and that's why he's very entertaining to watch and he's different and he's refreshing. So definitely all of you guys have to check him out if you haven't already. That's a very, very good match. I would almost recommend buying the show just to see that match if you're a fan of his because like I said, it made his career you can really see why a lot of people are really into Sam Del Sol. This 13th anniversary show, same issue as uh, Excellent Adventure. It's fun, but not a lot of... Like, you know, there's no really good match on here. Not that there's not even a great match. There's not even a very good match. But there's a, a good amount of three-star matches. There's one, two, three, four. Yeah, four. Excellent Adventure had three. This has four. But, you know, that's why, that's why this has a higher rating. Adam Cole's Rick Younger was fun. DJ Hyde Sammy Callahan was a, was a good street fight. Better than their one at uh, Deja Vu. Uh, the six man is fun. Chuck Taylor's really entertaining. I think that's why that was the match of the night. Black Jesus versus Homicide was very disappointing. I still thought it was okay, but I know a lot of people who hate this match. The crowd turned on both these guys. And it was clear that both, both these guys just weren't clicking. I still thought it was okay, but I know a lot of people that hate this match. Like I said, the crowd did turn on it. They were chanting bullshit. They were chanting, the this shit sucks. Like they, but it wasn't like Tyler Black, Austin Aries, Final Battle 09 levels, but it was still noticeable and it wasn't good. Anything else of note on the show? Uh, fuck. What else? Uh, the Robert Anthony, Devin Moore, Masada was almost the exactly the same three way as the one from Super Saturday. Same quality, I would guess. Main event was a disappointment, a little lackluster. Uh, Drew Gulak's gimmick is that in CCW is that he's not very and he's not a very interesting wrestler, which could be a problem when you're in the main event. But you know, I just think this match could have used more time, and I think that. It could have gotten over better in front of a different crowd, I guess. For the 13th anniversary show, this wasn't the right main event. I think they probably should have put this on a smaller show and had something else for the 13th anniversary show because this this didn't work for this crowd. So, unfortunately, yeah, I mean, that's that. Uh, but the show, the show is still okay. Again, fun. There's enough good. There's a there's a few good matches for me to give it slums and thumbs in the middle, tilting up, but not enough to go the full thumbs up. Open the Golden Gate. This is a fun show, a fun Dragon Gate USA show. I think it's a little, I don't know. Like I just, I, I'm I'm at the point where, where a very entertaining match with a lot of near falls just isn't enough. Like I need more. I need to be into the characters. And I've said this a few times already, but with Dragon Gate, the reason why I'm not that into their matches is just because all the Dragon Gate guys. Whenever I'm watching them, I just feel like I'm watching the same match over and over and over again. And that's why, I'm, for me, it's a struggle. To like sit through a full show. That's why like with CCW. Like I really appreciate the characters. And every match feels different. Same with Shakara. But with Dragon Gate every match feels the same. So that's why it's kind of tough for me to get into the personalities. Especially not in so much on this show. But on other shows where I just feel like I'm watching the same Japanese guys. Wrestle each other over and over and over again. It's tough. But on this show you know Chuck Taylor and Scorpius Cup the box Had a very fun match. Yoshino and Doi. I was expecting to not like that match. And I actually really enjoyed it. They had a lot of good near falls. Uh, Masato Yoshino is one of the guys that I can still pretty much get into. But both these two guys have great chemistry. Sammy Callan and Air Fox was a fun match. But Jesus, did these guys take a year off their careers? I mean, Jesus. Basically, I don't know why Gabe made it a tables match instead of a tables are legal match. Basically, a tables are legal match is you can use tables, but the match can ends in pinfall. In a tables match, it ends when someone goes through a table. So these guys did all did a bunch of spots through a table, but instead of a table, they used the fucking guardrail. So every single spot, they just like hit each other on the guardrail. Whereas if you had just made it a tables or a legal match, they literally could have substituted the guardrail for a table. And both these guys would have been safer. 
Pak Tozawa was fun, but again, just didn't do a lot for me. The main event was really good. Match of the night, definitely. But I've seen better matches from, from Seaman and Ricochet. But still, still a very good show. Not Nothing to complain about, really. Evolve 10. Uh, good stuff. The Gargano Ricochet stuff was kind of a disaster. They just these guys just didn't click. Obviously, Gargano was really hurt, so that's understandable. Just a cripple said, I thought I had a decent, like, you know, nine minute match with the table spots. It was fun for what it was. Chuck Taylor was strong for Super Smash Bros. was a really, really, really good match. Excellent near falls. And like I said, Super Smash Bros. is just so innovative in their offense. That's why they're so much fun to watch. Air Fox Jigsaw also had a very fun back and forth match. The scene match was good. One of the better scene matches I've ever seen. Cheech Hernandez Cloudy was okay, but a little too clunky. And Sammy Callan Bobby Fish was very hard hitting. And I was actually really into the match. I like Bobby Fish a lot. I, I just, I don't know why I gave this and used him in Dragon Gate USA. I just don't get it, but whatever. All right, now the WXW shows. These are the last shows from 2011. I'm not going to talk about these a lot because they're from 2011 and we're in July of 2012. But basically, you know, both shows were very good. The first show was short. It was only like two hours and eight minutes or something like that. Uh, there's a lot of good matches. A lot of people really love the Daisuke Sakamoto Chris Hero match. Uh, I didn't. It went 26 fucking minutes. It did not need to go that long. This match could have been 17 minutes and it would have been better. Honestly, because basically Daisuke worked over Chris Hero for fucking 20 minutes on his back. And then they traded near falls. And were, they weren't even enough near falls to like overcome it. They were very slow paced because they would hit a move and then Chris Hero would sell his back for like 40 seconds and then go for a pin. And then the last minute of this match I didn't like. Basically Daisuke hit three moves in a row on Hero and Hero kicks out at one. And then Daisuke hits him with an amazing lariat. And I'm like, that's a great finish. And Chris Hero kicks out. And I was furious, and I was even more furious when Daisuke immediately German suplexed him to get the pin. I really don't like it when they do this in indie matches. They hit a big move, and they do a false finish just so the crowd will pop. And then they hit another move immediately right after that to end the match. Basically, they wanted to end the match, but they just had to get that one last false finish. But the problem is, no one pops for the real finish. It's a known fact in wrestling. The false fin whenever the false finish is a louder pop than the real finish, you have a problem. And Jerry Lynn talked about this when he was working with an indie wrestler and like the guy had all these plans for all these false finish. And then Jerry Lynn just goes, what about the finish? What about the actual finish? What's the pop for that going to be? And I just hate when they do that. And I love Chris Hero a lot. I love Daisuke a lot. But this match was good. Very good. Um, it just went way too long. I don't know why it had to go 26 minutes. And the last minute I didn't like. If it wasn't for the last minute and maybe this would have been, I would have rated this a little higher. And maybe if it had less time, it would have been even higher than that. But it's still a very good match. But Jesus, for a 26-minute match, this is just too long. Drake Young or Junkasai only had like 15 minutes, and that pissed me off because I thought that match should have gone on longer. But what are you going to do? That Their main event was still fun, but I just thought it was too short. It was very, it was very, very, very entertaining, but too short. And uh, my, my match of the night was Adam Cole and Kyle Ryan for Sleeters and New Schools. Really fun. This got the right time. This got like 17 minutes. They traded a lot of near falls. It was very entertaining. I was really into the match. Very good stuff. Oh, and the Johnny Moss and Michael Logan versus Big Van Walter and Brody Lee. This was just a big guy match. Just four big guys throwing each other around and it was entertaining as all hell. Second best match in the show. And again, the show is short and super easy to sit through. So 7.75. That's a very fun show. Genesis and Jeremy, I didn't like as much. I'm rating the show almost a full two points lower than Honor Hammer did. Claudio and Segura was the match of the night, but you know, I just it was fun, but it wasn't it, it was a very good match, but nothing more. Kenneth Chris Hero again, I thought it was a very good match, but nothing more. Nakajima Ricky Marvin, same thing. Like I, I can understand there are times like where I'll see a drag at USA match that goes 25 minutes and all these crazy near falls, and I'll give it like three and a quarter. And I can understand why a normal indie fan would give it four. And you're not an idiot if you do. That's just, that's what appeals to you. It doesn't appeal to me as much anymore. But for Kenneth Chris Hero, I can't understand why people are giving this like four and a half, four and a quarter. I mean, honestly, they didn't even trade that many near falls. And I'm not knocking the match for that, but I just, like normally I can understand when I'm rating a match a lot lower than most people, but this one I can't. Like I honestly think even two years ago, I would have rated this match the same. And Bad Bones versus Go Shiozaki got 22 minutes. Again, too long. That match could have been 12 minutes and would have been just as good. I'm I don't know why WXW has these like 16-minute control segments of working over someone. It's unnecessary, especially for an undercard match. This show, it's a, it's a good show. There's, there's a lot of good matches, three very good matches. But again, 
just a little disappointing because of all the hype the show got. So, you know, that show's good. Cruzig is very good. The Evolve show's okay. The Dragon USA show's very good. The two CCW shows are okay, with one being pretty good. And Money in the Bank's a great pay-per-view. That's it for me. I'm Big Earthy 10. Bye, guys. Goodbye.